what's up guys it's not happy here with another video and today's video is going to be the poor man's basalt and summoner's war so before i get into this video i just want to talk about basically the definition of poor man's so simply put poor man's means it's not as good but you probably could replace it with that monster but of course it's not as good it's poor man's so that also means it's easier to obtain so basically it's easier to obtain and it's not as good but it serves kind of in the same purpose and it has similar skills or uses all right so here's the order of values list or kind of the tier list so as you could see tier one is the light dark nat fives so they're basically at the top of the list and then tier two is the regular nat fives as well as the ld nat fours so those guys are on the same level uh, tier 3 is the regular nat 4s and the LD nat 3s and tier 4 is the regular nat 3s and the LD nat 2s so basically if they're on the same level it can't be poor man's the poor man's has to be on a lower level so that's basically the order of values that's kind of just the rules of poor man's basically also if you didn't notice I am on the 12 star PVE account if you don't know what that is we posted a video a few days back about a new challenge we're doing trying to be all PVE content in only 12 six stars so if you go check that out if you haven't seen that already and the first episode should be coming out soon if not before this video it should be coming out sometime during the week of October 16th it might have already came out before we upload this video right now I'm not sure yet but anyways go check that out and if it hasn't been uploaded yet check it out once it's come out because it's gonna be really fun so anyways guys let's get into this video alright so like I said this is the poor man's basalt so first I will read basalt skills go over kind of what basalt does and then I will go into the poor man's basalt. So basalt's first skill is basically a provoke for 15% chance. If you max skill this, it will go up to 80% chance to provoke. So that's a pretty good skill. Provoke is always useful. It's always good to have a consistent provoke. So that's a good skill. Second skill recovers the HP of all allies and increases their defense for two turns. And the recovery amount is proportionate to my max HP. So it heals based on his max HP and it puts a defense buff. So again, a really pretty good skill because it's good to have a heal with a defense buff already plus it's based on his max HP so the tankier your basalt is the more to heal so that's pretty good third skill inflicts damage to all enemies proportionate to my defense and decreases the attack bar by 35% and the second and third skill are both reduced down to three turn cooldowns when you max skill him so by just reading those skills you should be able to figure out that basalt is meant to be built tanky because the second skill is based on his hp the third skill is based on his defense so of course you want a lot of defense and a lot of hp so anyways like i said you're going to want to build him tanky you're going to want accuracy on him because he has this provoke which you want to be able to land and he has his attack bar decrease which again you want to be able to land so accuracy is very good on basalt hp and defense both really good on basalt and then speed is also what you want because the more turns the better of course so speed hp defense and accuracy is what you should be mainly looking for so basalt is used very very commonly in toa normal and hard he's a great toa mon i'd say that's where he is best in this game is toa i mean he has a provoke which is very good in TOA, especially on boss stages, if you need to provoke the boss, like for example, on the Sierra stage, it's great to have provoke so Sierra doesn't get the bombs off. He also has a heal and defense buff, again, really good for TOA because you want to be able to stay alive. So the defense buff is very, very good, along with the heal, that's a great skill. And then his third skill is an attack bar decrease AoE, so again, very useful in TOA. He's really just like set up to be a TOA monster, in my opinion. These skills are just really good in TOA. You can also find use for him in maybe some PvP like Arena and Guild Battles. Again, this is a good skill. Provoke's good to have in those because you can provoke a monster with a deadly skill, for example. And then the attack bar decrease. And then he's just tanky, so yeah, he can be a decent Guild War or Arena monster too. But TOA is where you're mainly going to be using him. Alright, so now I will get into the poor man's version of Basalt. So the poor man's Basalt is... Talc, the water battle mammoth. So the poor man's basalt is actually one of the same monsters, one of the same kind. The only difference is that it's a different element, but basalt is a lot harder to obtain because he's light dark, and that's why this is a poor man's. Going back to the order of values list or the tier list, basalt is in tier 3, whereas 
Talc is in tier 4. So that's why this is poor man's because Talc is a lot easier to obtain even though they're the same star. Talc is water which is much easier to get because mystical scrolls come along a lot more often than light dark scrolls. So basalt can be hard to get because you, sometimes you just don't get lucky in your light dark scrolls. So now let me explain why Talc is the poor man's basalt. So his first skill is the exact same thing as basalt. He provokes for one turn with a 50% chance, goes up to 80% chance once you max skill. Second skill, again, the same exact skill. It recovers HP based on my max HP, and it increases the defense for two turns. So again, these two skills are exactly the same. Polar Roar is also on a three turn cooldown once you max skill him. So the only really difference between them besides their element is this passive. It decreases the inflicted damage by half if the damage is less than 20% of my max HP. So reading those skills, you'll figure out that you want to build him with as much HP as possible. Now defense doesn't hurt because he wants to be tanky, but HP is better on Talc because of this passive. If you can keep them from doing over 20% of his max HP, the damage will be very, very minimal. Because if they do less than 20% of his max HP, the damage will be halved on top of that. So if they are going to do 10% of his HP, that'll actually go down to 5. So if you had a 40k HP Tal, and they were going to hit for 5k, it would only actually do 2.5k damage to him, which is very good if you think about it, because it halves the damage, and you're going to build him tanky anyway, so it's going to be hard to do more than 20% of his HP, unless, of course, it's a really good nuker, but if you're using it against like TOA, this is very good, because it'll keep him alive. And then this skill with the heal and the defense buff, I mean, it's, they won't be doing much damage to Talc. It'll be, he's pretty tanky. And then he has the Provoke, again, and the Defense buff, and the Heal, both all really helpful skills. So, as you can probably tell, Talc is very, very similar to Basalt, and that's why he is the poor man's. I don't think he's as good, because I think Basalt's third skill is better than Talc's passive. Another thing is that Basalt is dark, so in TOA, he's able to land the Provoke, and the AoE attack bar decreased more consistently because he can land on any element because he's dark whereas water if you're going up against a wind monster chances are he won't land the provoke so i'm gonna use this example again if you're fighting the sierra there's a lower chance of this talc landing the provoke whereas with basalt you can be pretty sure it'll land that provoke because it is 80 percent chance so there is a chance it won't but you can be a lot more sure it won't get resisted so talc again is used very similarly to Basalt. You're going to use him in TOA. Provoke, defense buff, heal, and then just tankiness. Great in TOA, so Talc's going to be mainly used in TOA. Again, you're going to build him almost the same as Basalt, except I wouldn't really mess with defense too much. I'd more just try to get his HP as high as possible, get his speed really high, and get his accuracy up so you can land the Provoke. So they're really similar monsters, just Basalt's a little better because he's dark, and then the third skill I think is a little better, but being dark does help him a lot too, so that's basically the only reason Basalt is better than Talc. So yeah, you're mainly going to be using Talc also in TOA. You can also, again, use him in some PvP, so arena and guild battles, just as kind of a water tank, I would suggest. So if they have like a wind nuker, you could put Talc in and hope you can kind of tank that nuker. So that's easy, can be used situationally in PvP too, but TOA is where you're going to mainly be using them, guys. Talc is a pretty good monster, Basalt is a really good monster, so that's kind of why this is the poor man's, but really, if you don't have Basalt, Talc's not a bad build, Talc's pretty good. So anyways, guys, I think that is going to wrap up this video. If you have any video ideas, any poor man's ideas, leave them in the comments, and we can maybe make a video on that. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, also leave those in the comments, and we'll get back to you. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.